What is up everyone, my name is Joseph and welcome back to Casually Competitive MTG, where it's our goal to bring you semi-competitive EDH gameplay content that is both fast-paced and entertaining. In today's video, we have a very special pod for you. Our friends over at TCG Player challenge us, along with a few other content creators, to take some of the new Call Time Commanders and put them to the test. Now, you may have seen some of the videos from the other channels already. If you haven't, I highly suggest it, but this video that we have for you is one that I really personally enjoyed. Now, I didn't play in this game, but after watching the footage, if you know me at all, you'll know exactly why I enjoyed it. That all being said, the commanders that we have for you today in this pod are Bergi, God of Storytelling, Jorn, God of Winter, Orvar, the All Form, and Turgrid, God of Fright. Now, before we get into the opening hands and deck introductions, we have a few quick channel promotions. First, this video is sponsored by Alter Sleeves. If you're looking to pick up some cool looking art for your commanders or the cards in your decks without having to physically altering them, check out Alter Sleeves using the link in our description to not only support the channel, but also support artists on Alter Sleeves and pick up some affordable, unique looking card art. If you want to directly support the channel, we have a Patreon link is in the description with some reward tiers set up that we think you'll really enjoy if that's something you're interested in. This support goes a long way to to help improve these videos and we really appreciate those who help us out in this way. Next, if you want some casual competitive merch, tokens, or playmats when they're available, head on over to our website, link is also in the description. If you're looking to pick up cards in the near future, click on our TCG affiliate link before you do to directly help out the channel at no cost to you. And finally, if you're looking for some more Magic the Gathering memorabilia, we're affiliated with Flipside Gaming, where if you use our code CASUALLYMTG at checkout, you can receive 10% off eligible purchases and support the channel. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the opening hands and deck introductions. Going first in this game is Dylan from Play to Win, playing Bergi, God of Storytelling. Now this is a really interesting deck that in mono red looks to get infinite storm and then win using something like an Aetherflux Reservoir or a Grape Shot. Some of the combo lines involved to get infinite storm is a card like Grinning Ignis in combination with Bergy to get infinite storm and then win with one of those cards. And something like a Mystic Forge of Sensei's Divining Top in Bergy also works to draw your library and generate massive amounts of storm. There's also a Cloudstone Curio Dockside Extortionist plus another creature line. Really just a lot of ways to generate a high storm count or a lot of mana and then win through some type of payoff. Dylan's opening hand contained a sandstone needle, a mountain, a crystal vein, a burning inquiry, a bonus round, a mystic forge, and a final fortune. Going second is Jan from the Spike Feeders playing Jorn, God of Winter. Now, this is a deck archetype that I love to see played, but hate to play against. This is a Sultai Stacks deck that looks to just lock down the board using cards like Stasis, breaking parity with Jorn's ability to untap permanence. Really, it's just a way to make your friends play fair magic. While you go ahead and win with maybe a not so fair combo of Thassa's Oracle and Demonic Consultation. If you're not into that, there is a really cool line involving Orin Frostfang and in the Fang Bear to win with poison counters, which is not something you see very often. Jan's opening hand contained a Bloodstained Mire, a Wooded Foothills, a Scalding Tarn, and In Search of Greatness, a Mana Drain, and he mulliganed away a Misty Rainforest and a Demonic Consultation. Mike from Playing with Power went third in this game, playing Orvar the All Form. This is a really interesting and fairly unique commander that has some really cool combo lines attributed with it. I'm not going to go through all of them because looking at this list, there's quite a few, but many of them involve buyback cards and cards like Sapphire Medallion or multiple Sapphire Medallions for that case using Orvar's ability to greatly reduce the cost of the buyback on certain spells. And then you could continually cast this and buy this spell back to target something like a Gilded Lotus or a Coveted Jewel, really anything that makes mana in order to recast the spell. If you have enough Sapphire Medallions, it takes away all the colorless and then you just need something to produce colored mana you basically have infinite storm and mana cards like palancron also work really well in this deck combo lines involving future sight and this infinite mana and sensei's divining top allows you to draw your deck really it's just a lot of mono blue good stuff and it just seems to work really well in this kind of unique shell mike's opening hand contains two islands a mana crypt a windfall a rhystic study and he mulliganed away another island and an inventor's fair and finally, rounding out this game is our very own Adam playing Turgrid, God of Fright. This deck looks to play mono black stacks in a way by grinding down opponents' hands, but actually getting massive value off of it by getting the ability to put these cards onto the battlefield when they're sacrificed or discarded. While it's not forcing opponents to discard or sacrifice permanence, it looks to win through cards like Torment of Hailfire or even just repeated activations of Tiny Bones Trinket Thief. Adam's opening hand contained an ancient tomb, a swamp, a cavern of souls, 
Souls, an Arcane Signet, a Calling the Weak, a Grim Tutor, and a Plague Crafter. Remember, if you want to watch us play Magic Live, we stream weekly on our Twitch channel, and if you want to watch some non-Magic gameplay, check out our second channel, links are both in the description. Now with that all out of the way, let's get into the gameplay. Dylan starts off this game by drawing, playing a mountain, and then tapping that mountain to cast a Burning Inquiry. It resolves, everybody draws three cards, and then everyone discards three at random. There are quite a few cards here, so I'll just show them on screen rather than going over them. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Jan. Jan draws, plays a Scalding Tarn, and then passes to Mike. Mike draws, plays an Island, and for zero mana casts a Mana Crypt. He then casts a Grim Monolith, and then taps his mana to cast his commander, Orvar the All Forms. With a turn one commander and nothing left, he passes to Adam. Adam draws, plays an Ancient Tomb, and then taps it taking 2 damage to cast an Arcane Signet. He then casts a Lotus Petal, and he follows this up by casting a Mana Vault, and in response to the Mana Vault, not wanting to see another turn 1 commander, Jan responds by paying 2 life to counter the Mana Vault with a Mental Misstep. With nothing left, Adam passes to Dylan. Dylan untaps, plays a Crystal Vein, and then sacks a Crystal Vein to generate 2 colorless mana to help cast his commander. In response to this, Jan cracks his Scalding Tarn, paying 1 life, to find a Rhymewood Falls and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Dylan then, with his commander resolved, casts a Crimson Cobalt, making a red mana from his commander. He uses this red mana to cast a Conjurer's Bauble, making another red mana, and he then sacrifices the Conjurer's Bauble to draw a card, putting nothing into his library from his graveyard. With nothing left, he passes the turn, letting his floating mana fizzle. Jan untaps and then pays 2 life to have a breeding pool come in untapped. He then taps his mana to cast In Search of Greatness. With nothing left, he passes to Mike. Mike untaps and in his upkeep loses his mana crypt trigger taking 3 damage. He then plays an island as his land and then goes to combat and swings Orvar at Adam for 3 damage. Adam takes the damage and Mike, with nothing left, passes to Adam. Adam untaps, plays a Swamp, and then sacrifices his Lotus Petal and taps the rest of his mana, taking 2 damage from Ancient Tomb, to cast his Commander. His Commander resolves, and with nothing left, he passes to Dylan. Dylan untaps, plays a Mountain, and then goes to combat and swings his Commander at Jan. Jan declares no blockers and takes the 3 Commander damage. With nothing left, Dylan passes to Jan. Jan untaps and in his upkeep Search for Greatness triggers and Jan scries, bottoming the card. He then in his main phase plays a snow-covered island, and then taps his mana to cast his commander, Jorn. He then goes to pass the turn, and on his end step, Mike taps his mana to untap his Grim Monolith. Mike then goes to his turn, untaps, and in his upkeep wins his mana crypt trigger. He then plays an island as his land, and goes to combat and swings Orvar at Dylan this time, who declares no blockers and takes the damage. With nothing left, he passes to Adam. Adam untaps, and in his first main phase, he takes 2 damage from Ancient Tomb to cast a Soul Ring. He then uses the floating mana and the Soul Ring to help cast Liliana, Waker of the Dead. In response to this Planeswalker, Mike taps his mana to cast a Pull from Tomorrow, X equaling 5. He draws 5 cards, discards a Pact of Negation, and Liliana then resolves. Adam activates Liliana's negative 3 ability to give Orvar negative 5, negative 5 until the end of turn. In response to this activation, Mike casts a Chain of Vapor, targeting his own Orvar. It resolves and he returns his commander to his hand. He decides to not copy it, and Adam, with nothing left to do and the stack clear, passes to Dylan. Dylan untaps and starts his turn off by casting a Faithless Looting, making a red mana from his commander. He draws two and discards a Shatter Skull Smashing in a bonus round. He then uses his floating mana to cast a Flamekin Harbinger and makes a red from his commander on cast. When it enters the battlefield, he searches for an elemental and puts it to the top of his library. He finds a Grinning Ignis. He then plays a Prismatic Vista as his land and passes to Jan. Jan untaps and in his upkeep in search of greatness triggers and he scries again, scrying to the bottom. He then, in his first main phase, casts a Ponder, looking at the top three cards, decides to shuffle, and then draws a card when the shuffle is complete. He then plays a Verdant Catacombs as his land for turn, and for a green mana, casts a Carpet of Flowers. In response to this, Mike pays two life to cast a Mental Misstep, successfully countering the carpet. Jan then goes to combat and swings his commander at Mike for three damage, and on attack, Jan untaps each of his snow permanents. Mike takes the damage, and Jan, with nothing left, passes to Mike. Mike untaps and in his upkeep wins his mana crypt trigger, not taking damage. He then in his first main phase casts a frantic search. He draws two cards, discards Orvar and a polluted delta, 
puts the commander back into the command zone and on the discard Turgrid triggers and Adam decides to take the blue to Delta and put it onto the battlefield under his control. Mike then plays an island as his land and taps his mana to cast a Trinket Mage. When Trinket Mage enters the battlefield, he searches a Sensei's Divining Top to his hand, and he then taps his mana to cast this top. With nothing left, Mike passes to Adam. Adam untaps and activates Liliana's plus one ability to make everyone discard a card. In response to this, Mike activates his Sensei's Divining Top to look at the top three cards and then rearrange what's on top. Dylan discards a Mystic Forge, Jan a Bloodstained Mire, Mike a Mystic Sanctuary, and Adam an Everflowing Chalice. Turgrid triggers on all of the cards and Adam returns them all from the graveyard to his side of the battlefield. Adam then uses Mystic Forge to look at the top card of his library and he casts a Jet Medallion off of the top. He then takes 2 damage from Ancient Tomb to help cast a Plague Crafter, floating 1 mana, and when it enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. Adam sacrifices a Plague Crafter, Mike his Trinket Mage, Jan his Commander, and Dylan the Crimson Kobold. Jan decides to put Jorn into the command zone, but Adam gets the other creatures from his commander's trigger, and when the Trinket Mage enters the battlefield under his control, Adam searches a Chalice of the Void to his hand. He then uses his floating mana to help cast the Chalice X equaling 1, and with nothing left, he passes to Dylan. Dylan untaps, and in his first main phase, pays 1 life to crack his Prismatic Vista. Turgrid triggers, and Adam returns the Prismatic Vista to Adam's side of the battlefield. Then still with the Prismatic Vista on the stack, Adam pays 3 life to crack his 3 fetches to find 3 swamps, and he then taps his mana to cast an Opposition Agent. In response to this, Jan cracks his Verdant Catacombs, paying 1 life to find a Woodland Chasm. This triggers Turgrid, and Adam takes the Fetchland from his graveyard. The agent then resolves and Adam searches Dylan's library for a mountain, exiling it from his library. With nothing left, Dylan passes to Jan. Jan untaps and on his upkeep, In Search of Greatness triggers and he again scries, bottoming the card. He then plays a snow-covered island as his land for turn and then taps his mana to recast his commander. He then goes to pass the turn to Mike and on Jan's end step, Mike activates his sensei's divining top, rearranging the top three cards of his library. Mike then goes to his turn untaps, loses his mana crypt trigger in his upkeep, plays an island as his land, and then casts his commander. He goes to pass the turn to Adam, and on Mike's end step, Adam cracks the Verdant Catacombs to get a swamp to his battlefield. Adam then goes to his turn, untaps, plays a swamp for his land, and then casts a Grim Tutor. He searches a card to his hand and loses 3 life. He then taps out completely to cast a Torment of Hailfire, X equaling 8. Dylan and Jan both decide to take the full 24 damage, and Mike sacrifices his Sensei's Divining Top and his Grim Monolith, and then loses 18. Turgor triggers on the sacrifice, and Adam gets those two permanents to his side of the battlefield. Adam then activates Liliana's plus one ability to make everyone discard, Dylan a Pyrate Spellbomb, Jan a Force of Will, Mike a Palancron, and Adam had an empty hand, so he did not discard. Turgrid triggers on all of these and he returns the Spellbomb and the Palancron to his side of the field. Palancron enters the battlefield and Adam untaps 7 lands. He then activates his newly acquired Sensei's Divining Top to rearrange the top 3 cards of his library. He then pays 1 to sacrifice the Pyrate Spellbomb to draw a card. He then pays 2 mana to cast Desolation. He then taps his Sensei's Divining Top to draw a card and return it to the top of Mike's library. He then pays 4 mana, taking 2 damage from Ancient Tomb, to cast Karn the Great Creator. He activates Karn's plus 1 ability to basically kill Mike's mana crypt by making it a 0-0 artifact creature. He then goes to combat and swings his commander at Jan, who declares no blockers and takes the 4 commander damage. He then goes to pass the turn to Dylan, and on his end step, Desolation triggers and Adam sacrifices a swamp. Dylan goes to his turn, untaps, plays a Ramunap Ruins as his land for turn, and then taps his mana to cast a Cloudstone Curio. He makes a red mana with his commander, but with nothing to do, he goes to pass the turn, and on his end step, Desolation triggers and he sacrifices a mountain, which Adam gets on his battlefield. Jan then goes to his turn, untaps, and in his upkeep, In Search of Greatness triggers, and Jan again decides to scry to the bottom. He then for 0 mana casts a Mana Crypt, and with nothing left to do, he passes to Mike. Mike untaps, and in his first main phase casts an Archaeomancer, and when it enters the battlefield he gets back Chain of Vapor to his hand. He then goes to pass the turn to Adam, and on Mike's end step, Desolation again triggers, and Mike sacrifices an Island, which again Adam gets. 
Adam then goes to his turn, untaps, and in his first main phase casts his own Grim Monolith, because apparently one just isn't enough. He then looks at the top card of his library with Mystic Forge, and decides to activate Liliana's plus one ability again. In response to this, Mike for a blue mana casts Chain of Vapor, targeting his Archaeomancer. When the Archaeomancer is targeted, Mike's commander triggers and he makes a copy of the Archaeomancer, and when the copy enters the battlefield, he grabs a Pact of Negation from his graveyard. Chalice of the Void then triggers and counters the original Chain of Vapor. Now the discards happen, Dylan discards a Grinning Ignis, Jan has no cards so he loses 3 life, Mike discards a Pact of Negation, and Adam has no cards in hand so has nothing to discard. Turgard again triggers and he returns the Grinning Ignis to his side of the battlefield. He then goes to combat and swings his commander at Dylan and Palancron at Jan. Dylan decides to preserve some life total and double blocks the menaced commander, and Palancron, well, deals enough damage to Jan to take him out of the game. Unfortunately, they forgot to remove the creatures from Dylan's side of the battlefield, but it didn't make too much of a difference. Adam then goes to his end step and Desolation triggers, and Adam sacrifices the island he originally got from Mike. Desolation also triggers for Mike, and Mike sacrifices one of his islands. Dylan then goes to his turn, untaps, and then casts a Magnum Brazen Outlaw. On cast, he makes a red, and then with nothing left to do, he goes to pass the turn to Mike, and on his end step, Desolation triggers and he sacrifices his Ramunap Ruins. When it hits the graveyard, that land is then converted to Adam's side of the battlefield. Mike then goes to his turn, untaps, and then taps some mana to cast a Sapphire Medallion. He then for one mana casts a Sensei's Divining Top, and since the CMC is one, the Chalice of the Void counters it. With nothing left, he goes to pass the turn, and on his end step, Desolation triggers and he sacrifices an island, which Adam happily takes. Adam then goes to his turn, untaps, and then taps for two mana to cast Tiny Bones. He then activates Liliana's plus one ability to make everyone discard, but as it turns out, when you're playing a deck that makes people discard, people run out of cards quickly, so Dylan and Mike both lose three. Adam then activates his Tiny Bones to make each opponent with no cards lose 10 life, which unfortunately for his opponents is both of them, so it deals them 10 damage, which is enough to take them both out of the game, and Adam then wins the game. Now, I wasn't watching this game, but I did take a look at Adam's deck list before he played, and honestly, this game comes at no surprise. Adam has a really good way of kind of just sliding under the radar somewhere and just playing a somewhat unoptimal or maybe would normally be considered inefficient card, like a 4 mana cost Lily on a Planeswalker, but when he can get it out early and since it synergizes with his deck so well, it just does so much work. I'm really happy that this deck could show what it could do because honestly I thought it was a really cool concept and I thought the deck looked really interesting so I'm glad I got to see it perform, but if you want to watch some of the other decks performed, each of the other channels uploaded videos on this pod as well, and from what I understand, pretty much every deck got its time to shine, so if you're interested be sure to check out the other three videos from the other three channels, we'll link them in the description down below. That all being said, we hope you enjoyed this video, we hope you are excited for call time, and if you do want to pick up some call time cards, click on our TCG affiliate link before you do. It does do a great deal to help us out and helps us to continue improve these videos. That being said, we hope you enjoyed this video. I am Joseph. This is Casually Competitive MTG, and we will see you next time.